Touchdown! 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 The Bills make me wanna shout. Kick your heels up and shout. Throw your hands up and shout. Throw your head back and shout. But come on now, the Bills are making it happen now. Stand up now, come on and shout. Yeah, 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 yeah. Shout it right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to this week's edition of the Buffalo Fanatics Podcast. As always, I am your host, Fern Bannatine. You can reach me on Twitter at, at @fbanaty. That's at f b a n n a t y, or at Buff Fanatics Pod. I can be reached on Facebook at Fern Bannatine. You can DM me. Basically, if you want to get a hold of me uh, about anything Buffalo Bills related, uh, go ahead and you have the green light to do so. On this week's episode, we are going to touch on one of the most popular, if not the most popular, topic amongst Buffalo Bills fans and Buffalo Fanatics fans. Uh, this show is the Josh Allen Show. We're going to talk uh, strictly about Josh Allen. We're going to take a look back at his rookie year and try to make sense of it from uh, both a statistical perspective. We're going to break down some specific metrics and uh, what they mean for his long-term prognosis. We're also going to talk about what we saw with the naked eye and try to contextualize why he performed the way he did when he did. There were a few mitigating factors, obviously, early in the season. It was a tale of two seasons uh, for Josh Allen, which you're going to hear about quite a bit on this episode of the podcast. The first part of the season when he was rushed into being a starter, uh, halfway through the first game of the season when it wasn't really the expectation for the coaching staff. Uh, and then the second half of the season when he came back from injury in November and looked like a, a completely different quarterback. He started to get his wheels going. Became one of those new age dual threat quarterbacks. He started to generate more touchdowns. Uh, we saw the development of his relationship with wide receiver Robert Foster, another rookie who really came into his own late in his rookie season. And uh, statistically speaking, he was one of the better receivers in the NFL down the stretch last season. And now with Allen, I can unequivocally state that uh, from the beginning of the year when he was thrust into action to, compared to where he was at the end of the year, uh, he showed a trend- tremendous amount of progress. And there's certainly a lot of reasons and factors are for why Bill fans are right to feel cautiously optimistic about uh, Josh Allen's prognosis as the uh, franchise quarterback of the near and long term of this team. But um, cautiously optimistic, of course, because there's still going to be quite a bit of development that needs to take place before He actualizes his potential and meets these expectations. And now for a snapshot of his season. Uh, Overall in the season, uh, Allen finished with 10 touchdown passes, 12 interceptions, uh, 52.8 completion percentage. Uh, He had a 5-6 record in games he started. Interesting to note that the Bills were 1-4 in games that he did not start. Of course, he came in as a 7th pick overall in the 2018 NFL Draft. Uh, he, he immediately showed signs or flashes of pure brilliance in the preseason. Lots of inconsistency as well. Uh, one great play for every one bad play, as t- was to be expected. Uh, there was no doubt about it that he was a very raw product coming out of uh, the University of Wyoming. And to that note, about a month before the 2018 NFL Draft, we had signed quarterback A.J. McCarron. We had Nathan Peterman in camp coming into his second year, who the Bills coaching staff had for better or for worse, at this point, in retrospect, um, they had a lot of faith in Nathan Peterman. Uh, Peterman ended up having a great preseason. Uh, McCarron struggled in preseason and was subsequently traded to the Oakland Raiders before the season started. And Nathan Peterman was named the starting quarterback. And Allen was named as backup with no real expectations to start early in the season. It looked like it was planned to be a redshirt year for Josh Allen. And, of course, uh, by halftime... In game one, the Nathan Peterman experiment had failed miserably. He had one of the worst first halves of any quarterback in the history of the league. And lo and behold, by the second half, Josh Allen was thrust into his first regular season game action. And not surprisingly, Allen struggled that first game uh, with no preparation, probably very little practice leading up to the game, uh, facing an NFL defense for the first time and a pretty reputable NFL defense in the Baltimore Ravens for that matter. Then by Wednesday the following week, Josh Allen is named the starter for uh, week two, the week two game versus the Los Angeles Chargers. Uh, the coaching staff really had very little choice at that point. They uh, certainly could not roll Nathan Peterman back out there and instill faith in the, in the team and the coaching staff They actually, that they actually had a commitment to win football games. Uh, but for Allen, it 
represented probably one of the worst uh, situations that a rookie quarterback could be thrust into. Again, we knew that he was raw coming out of Wyoming. Very little time to prepare as a starter. He was expected to redshirt most of his first season. The offensive line was in shambles with the prior retirements of Eric Wood and Richie Incognito. The amount of weapons he had were, were extremely limited. The receiving core was at that point considered one of the worst in the NFL. Calvin Benjamin uh, didn't look like he was giving his full effort out there. Charles Clay wasn't, didn't look like the same player. Uh, behind those two players, there was a young and unproven Zay Jones and uh, nobody else really. Uh, even LaShawn McCoy just didn't look like his old self, of course, behind that offensive line. And uh, he was going to start to struggle with a range of injuries, uh, hamstring, rib, concussion issues. So if you put the, the complete picture together, uh, Allen was put in a position where it was going to be very hard for him to have success early in those first few weeks of the season. Of course, by week three, the Bills were 0-2 and traveling into Minnesota where they were uh, approximately 17-point underdogs against a pretty solid Vikings team with a really good defense. And surprise to surprise, Allen puts together a tremendous game. Uh, the Bills get off to a, a early 27-point lead and end up winning that game 27-6. Uh, Allen starts to show flashes of his uh, or scrambling and rushing ability. Of course, there's that one highlight play where he leaps over a defender, Anthony Barr, probably his trademark play of the season. And then the high of that game comes to a crashing halt. And the next game, when Allen has his worst game of the season against the Green Bay Packers, where the Bills are shut out in Green Bay. Simply put, Allen plays terribly. He just doesn't look comfortable all game. Defensive coordinator Mike Pettin of the Packers does a really good job in that game of disguising his blitzes and you can see all game that Allen feels the phantom pressure he continuously tries to escape the pro- pocket throws the ball away or uh, makes an inaccurate throw uh, feeling that pressure uh, but of course contextually speaking we're talking about a, a rookie NFL quarterback who was uh, pretty raw going into his rookie season uh, starting his uh, third ever game in the NFL uh, facing uh, some pretty complex looks that he most likely had never seen before in the next two weeks Allen does struggle a little again. He plays like a rookie. Uh, however, the Bills do win the next game against Tennessee, and Allen does orchestrate a, a game-winning drive. Uh, the week after that, he puts the Bills in a position to win, but then exits the game with uh, an elbow injury. And I think that's where the, the first of two sequels of Josh Allen's season ends. We have these first six games where he's unexpectedly th- thrust into to game action earlier, much earlier than anticipated, and not surprisingly, he struggles. Uh, then, of course, he has the injury, which causes him to miss five weeks of the season. But uh, in retrospect, looking back, uh, perhaps uh, taking those f- five weeks off uh, w- might have been a blessing in disguise, where he can sit back, reflect, uh, watch some tape. Then, of course, he comes back to action uh, week 12 versus the Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, I think we all saw that Allen was pretty much a whole different quarterback at that point. He Uh, really progressed quickly week to week from then on in with a few exceptions and I think the statistics kind of back up what we saw in those last few weeks. Over the first stretch of the season Allen threw two touchdown passes and five interceptions with around a 52% completion rate Uh, and then when he came back he started six games. He had about the same completion percentage but he uh, had an eight to seven touchdown to uh, interception ratio. We see the uh, offense pick up tremendously after that point uh, I think a lot of that's on Brian Dable as well as he started making some better play calling as he got more comfortable with the players he had in the offense. Uh, we saw the emergence of Robert Foster. And we saw Allen really get start to get comfortable with Robert Foster, uh, which could be some nice foreshadowing for the future of these, as these two young players develop. Uh, and then we also s- witnessed the emergence of Josh Allen as a scrambling quarterback, which not many of us expected. And it was definitely a surprise to me at Hadn't really heard or seen uh, his rushing and evading ability at uh, the University of Wyoming. Uh, Allen ran for at least 95 yards in four of those, those six final games. He averaged 62.8 yards rushing per game, which would have put him over 1,000 yards rushing for the season as if he averaged that over a full season. And I want to pay particular uh, attention to some of those uh, rushing stats because I see a lot of Allen's critics, especially in the Twitter community, who... I always seem to base their negative outlook on Allen on his, strictly his passing stats and his completion percentage and uh, his inconsistencies with his accuracy without really considering or making a point to mention that uh, the rushing was a huge element to his game and he really helped the Bills offense. He got a lot of third down conversions uh, by using his legs. 
Of course, when you're getting almost 100 yards in four of those six games, 100 yards rushing in four of those six games, it makes a big difference. Uh, if he can continue to maintain even uh, some percentage of that rushing ability, uh, it's going to help the Bills win games, and it's part of the overall picture that we have to take into account when we evaluate Josh Allen. And in fact, in light of the, uh, with the NFL uh, continuing its trend towards these dual-threat quarterbacks, I saw a really interesting statistic uh, put together by uh, Chris Trapazzo from CBS Sports. He calls it yards per dropback, or YPDB, and it's a, a yardage efficiency metric for quarterbacks that measures the average yards a quarterback creates, and not just on every pass, but every time a quarterback drops back to pass. So it takes into account sacks. It takes into account yards gain, gained both on rushes and passes. And uh, I personally, it really resonates with me uh, as a metric that really articulates how valuable a quarterback is to an offense. And now in terms of Josh Allen's uh, yard per drop back, uh, this stat really uh, demonstrates uh, how it was a tale of two seasons for Allen. In those first six games of the season, Allen was second last amongst qualifiers uh, with a 4.63 uh, yards per drop back rating. Interesting to note that uh, only Josh Rosen, the current Miami Dolphins quarterback, uh, was worst at that point. Uh, but then in those six games, uh, after Allen returned from injury, uh, he actually put up a, a 6.61 rating, uh, which was uh, good for 13th in the league, better than the league average, uh, ahead of Aaron Rodgers and Carson Wentz for that matter. I'll note again that Josh Rosen uh, finished pretty comfortably in dead last in this statistic in 2018. I think all these stats really indicate uh, or just show uh, what we saw with the naked eye as well, that Josh Allen uh, continued to progress throughout the season, and in particular in those last six games. Uh, we talked about some of the factors behind that. Uh, one other thing was the Bills bringing in uh, both of uh, veteran quarterbacks, Derek Anderson and Mac Barkley, uh, during the period when Josh Allen was injured. Uh, I think the first uh, intention for bringing those quarterbacks in is because well, we need a quarterback, a quarterback to start games and feasibly have a chance to, to win games. But both those quarterbacks uh, turned out to be really solid mentors and advisors for Josh Allen and uh, something that he spoke to following the season. And it's a reason why the coaching staff wanted to bring back both Barkley and Anderson. Unfortunately, Anderson has since retired. And I do think his leadership is going to be missed uh, partially during this next season and beyond that. Now, we've spoken a lot about uh, the reasons for optimism and how Josh Allen progressed throughout his rookie season. Uh, but being realistic, if, if we do want a, a quarterback here that's going to become a franchise quarterback and put us in a, a, posi a position where we're perennial uh, contenders, Josh Allen is going to have to take a big step forward. Uh, despite the progress, there's still a, a great number of inconsistencies in his game. Uh, we saw throughout his rookie season where he'd make a, a, an incredible th throw one play or an incredible play, or rather be a run or a pass, one play, and then uh, do something either boneheaded or just uh, make a rookie mistake the next play. And uh, while his statistics did get better over the second half of the season, uh, the, in no way, shape, or form did he put up uh, the kind of numbers that we're going to have to expect if he is going to become that uh, franchise quarterback. And if you start to look at the overall picture uh, with regards to his statistics uh, during his rookie year, he, he did still rank near the bottom of the league in many important categories. Uh, keeping that offense sustained and getting first downs was a problem for Allen. He, last, uh, he ranked dead last in the AFC in first downs per attempt. Otherwise, interceptions were also a problem. He ranked second last in interceptions per attempt in all of the NFL at a 3.8% rate. Interesting to note here that uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick, who is the other quarterback battling for the starting gig with the Miami Dolphins, ranked worst in the NFL in that category, as he so often does. Now, a statistic where uh, Allen was actually uh, pretty decent, uh, and, I, and I think we did see it throughout the season, is his ability to complete, uh, get first downs on third and long. Uh, Allen, uh, Allen's percentage to get first downs on third and long, that's third and eight or longer, was uh, 24.4%, uh, about 1 in 4, which is uh, middle of the pack of the league, uh, which stands out relative to most of his other stats were uh, closer to the bottom of the league. And and actually, I thought that stat would probably be even better if it weren't for some uh, pretty untimely penalties that we saw throughout the season when Allen would make a nice play and a nice throw to complete a, a third and long and only to have it called back by uh, some kind of penalty or another. I swear, anecdotally, it seemed to happen quite often, especially uh, later in the season. It was really frustrating to watch at times. 
Another really nice part of Allen's game that we saw throughout his rookie season, and it's always something that's kind of hard to quantify through stats, but I think we have some evidence here, and that's his, his clutch ability. Of course, you always want a quarterback that's going to shine uh, late in fourth quarters or late when you're behind in games and uh, just puts you in a position where you're never really out of a game. I'm not saying he's totally there yet, but there are some stats that kind of back up that he is going to become that type of quarterback. Uh, if you look at his quarterback rating, in the fourth quarter he had a 77.6 quarterback rating. That's compared to uh, 67.9 in all, all other quarters of the game. Uh, really nice to see that he picks up his game a little bit in the in the fourth quarter. Uh, he already has two fourth quarter comebacks and three game winning drives under his belt. During his rookie season uh, in 2018, only eight quarterbacks in the league had uh, more than three game winning drives actually. It's also always nice to point out the uh, follies of other quarterbacks within our division. Interesting to note that Sam Darnold finished second last in uh, fourth quarter quarterback rating last season. He led the league with seven interceptions thrown in the fourth quarter. Uh, so maybe going forward, Josh Allen is going to be the, the clutch quarterback and where Sam Darnold uh, might struggle. Obviously, it's very early to say that. It's a very small sample size, but it's nice to see these trends already starting to uh, appear. Uh, now let's talk about our expectations for Josh Allen uh, going into his second season and maybe even beyond that. I had a little chat with a few a few other Buffalo Fanatics administrators recently about uh, uh, what Josh Allen's upside is and what the reasonable expectations are for, for Josh Allen where we can comfortably label him our, our franchise quarterback. And uh, what's naturally going to happen in these situations is he's, we're going to set the bar extremely high, now, especially in light of the the season that the historic season that Pat Mahomes had last year and the historic rookie season that Deshaun Watson was putting together before he got injured uh, two years ago and of course there's going to be some Bills fans that throw around uh, that type of expectation and there, there were definitely a few fans who were uh, really talking about that being Josh Allen's upside now, I'd probably put a halt to those expectations uh, first and foremost because uh, Pat Mahomes season last year was such a an outlier in so many respects. I mean, it was incredible. <laughs> incredible. He became the uh, third quarterback in history to throw for 50 touchdown passes in a season in his first season as a starter. He was named a first-team All-Pro MVP of the league, uh, set uh, numerous records throughout the season when he got off to that really fast pace, set numerous Kansas City Chiefs uh, records uh, in so far as quarterbacks go. And of course, the year before that, Deshaun Watson was on an incredible pace as well to put up uh, some pretty gaudy numbers for a rookie. Uh, Allen doesn't really have to be a, a Pat Mahomes or a, a Deshaun Watson, at least what he was in those first few games, uh, to bring us to that next level. Uh, I think you saw with Mahomes was in the, in the Chiefs uh, in that they had they also, as, for as good as their offense was, they had a historically bad defense, and uh, that defense led to their demise in the playoffs. I think that just demonstrates that uh, even if you have the, the best quarterback in the league with all the bells and whistles, it doesn't necessarily guarantee that uh, you're automatic Super Bowl winners. You certainly need a quarterback who uh, meets a certain bar or a certain criteria where he is a, a franchise-type quarterback where if you, you put the right uh, structure and supporting cast and a good defense out there around him, uh, you do have a chance to contend for Super Bowls. So Allen, uh, although he has some nice upside, I don't think he's ever going to be Pat Mahomes, and I don't think he's ever going to have to be uh, on that type of level to to bring us to the next level. Uh, but I think if you put, you know, at least just a franchise quarterback, let's say we set the bar at a, a Ben Roethlisberger type quarterback, or even maybe a little below that threshold, a Cam Newton type quarterback. I think if Josh Allen gets to that level, obviously we've seen that Roethlisberger has demonstrated that he can win Super Bowls. Uh, we saw Cam Newton go 15-1 and in one regular season, uh, bring his team to within a few quarters of winning a Super Bowl uh, in a year when he had a, a sub-60% uh, completion percentage, but he had an excellent defense. Uh, he obviously had some ability to use his legs to scramble and make some plays. And I think that's kind of where our expectations should lie, a, a bar right around that uh, Newton and Roethlisberger level. Or I don't think he has to be tossing 50 touchdowns a year for us to be a perennial contender. And even on that note, I think it's uh, very probable that we see some regression from uh, Pat Mahomes this year. Uh, just naturally, uh, given Pat Mahomes' historic season and the bar he set, uh, it's natural to assume that he is going to uh, regress a little from those statistics. And I think we saw with Deshaun Watson uh, in his second year that he, he did regress a little from his rookie year as NFL coordinators kind of caught up to his game and started to adjust to counter his particular strengths. He certainly struggled in that playoff game against Indianapolis Colts last year. 
I don't want to judge him too harshly on that particular game because uh, that was probably the worst game of his professional career, at least the worst game I can recall him seeing. He just did not look comfortable all game and he was throwing, under throwing a lot of balls, feeling the phantom pressure. Of course, the Texans had uh, just terrible pass pro last year, so that was obviously a factor in uh, Watson's struggles. But all suffice to say is if Josh Allen could continue to progress and reach the type of upside around a Cam Newton or a Ben Roethlisberger level or somewhere in between, I think at that point we could comfortably state that we do have a franchise quarterback. Uh, we wouldn't have to worry about the position. We could be comfortable that each and every year we'd have an, a good chance of making the playoffs and, of course, making a playoff run. It would just be sort of a constant where we'd have to worry about the other variables, putting a, a good defense on the field, uh, providing him with the right weapons, providing him with the right protection, keeping him healthy. And, uh, you know, the quicker it happens, uh, the better our situation because we're not going to have to pay him one of those hefty uh, quarterback market contracts. I think it's safe to say that we have at least another three years and possibly more with him before we would start the, the contract negotiations, be- provided that he does take that next step. And as I've uh, hopefully made the case for today, a lot of indicators that he is going to take that next step. And it's just a really exciting time to be a Bills fan. I know I'm extremely intrigued by what's going to happen next this this next year. Uh, just given all the free agents we brought in, given the expectations for Josh Allen, there's a lot of uncertainty, but a lot of it's uh, positive and exciting. And you know, we just have to get through uh, the rest of June and then July, hopefully have a nice summer, and then we can start the preseason and wait for all this excitement to begin. So that's the show for today. Hope you guys enjoyed talking some Josh Allen. We'll be back next week. I have a few ideas of what we're going to explore in next week's show, but I'll, I'll leave you guys in suspense for now. So until next time, I'm signing off. Thank you, everybody.